All right. Uh, so I guess now you understand what the plan was. Absolutely. At Colts Law, we talk Indianapolis Colts football. We're going to stick to what we know, fundamentals and technique, 1% better every day. All right. Uh, so I guess now you understand what the plan was. Absolutely. At Colts Law, we talk Indianapolis Colts football. We're going to stick to what we know, fundamentals and technique, 1% better every day. All right. Uh, so I guess now you understand what the plan was. Absolutely. At Colts Law, we talk Indianapolis Colts football. Welcome to another Film Room Breakdown with myself, Lawrence Owen, here at Colts Law. Um, you can follow me on Twitter, at Colts underscore law. Uh, I am also here on YouTube. I'm on Sportscaster. Those of you watching on Sportscaster and YouTube, please hit that like, hit that subscribe, follow button, hit the notification bell. That way you are notified next time I go live. If you're watching on YouTube, please, please, please check out that description. Uh, there's a couple links in there. Love you to check those out. That way, any donations would help me bring more content to you and possibly upgrade my content. Keep it coming, right? I mean, that's, that's what it's all about, man. So, I've had a poll out the last few weeks about different players that I want to be able to break down for you guys. Young Colts players, uh, rookie, second year, third year guys. And for the last few weeks, I've been really hoping Kamoko Ture would hit that. And he hasn't until today. I finally have Kamoko Ture. I got the okay from all you Colts fans for me to break down Kamoko Ture's film room from last year, and I am really, really excited. I've been waiting to do this for a while now. Kimoko Ture is not your everyday defensive end. He's not your every down guy. He is your pass rush specialist, all right? Uh, he, he's been working the last couple off seasons with Robert Mathis. Mathis teaching him different ways of getting off blocks, how to bend, and the kid, the kid is so fast, and he bends so well. He's like Gumby with rocket skates, right? He's able to get around corners and, and get to the quarterback. And when it comes to stunts and things like that, man, when he cuts back inside, he's too quick for a guard to get a hold of. And when it comes to the running back trying to block him, good luck. Running backs generally have to grab a hold of him and tag him down. Just like uh, the thumbnail that I had there. I mean, come on. You can't. And how did he not get called for that, right? Holding. That's obvious holding. But, I mean, I guess... Referees can't catch everything, right? But enough of that. He only had a short season last season because he had a broken leg at the end of the Kansas City game last season, week five, which really kind of hurt his entirety of the season. But during those first five weeks, he was rated as a top five pass rush rating. He had a top five pass rush rating by PFF. Didn't always get to the quarterback, but my goodness, he had like a, one of the best. I, th I think, if I remember correctly, he had the highest pressure rate of any defensive end per snap by PFF. And we're going to go over these uh, film room, break it down, show you what he does so well. And we're going to get to that right now in 3, 2, 1, all right, so on this first play, we're going to look at what he can do against the run. This kid is fantastic. He is so fast. This is going to be a run by Austin Eckler towards the right tackle. Now, as you know, Kimoko Ture is up here. So Eckler's supposed to go this way. He ain't even blocked. Ture ain't even blocked because Eckler's a quick running back, and they don't expect the defensive end on this side to be able to get over here to get the tackle. 
but Ture does an excellent job of weaving in and out of the wash, so to speak. And that's what I like to call when, when once the ball is snapped and you have your offensive line doing all their blocks against uh, the front seven, and you got the wash where all these peoples are blocking, you got people in the way, and it's hard for certain players to be able to weave in and out of there. You can't have a direct shot. So, Ture does a great job getting through the wash, getting to the running back for a tackle for nearly no gain. So let's let's check this let's check this play out here. All right, they all move, and there's a snap. There's the handoff. Bam! Wow. All right, so. We're going to go back and watch. As you see, we're in an I formation right now. The The offense is in an I formation. you got the linebackers all kind of set over here in this in this way. They're all moved on, on this side, expecting the run to come this way. Then we have movement. They go from an I formation to an offset. He's over here. The tight end goes over here, which is going to push all the linebackers over this direction. And this is why they're going to run weak side. See how they're all moved up? They're all red because of the, they got most of their power set over here. You got all your linebackers moved onto this side so that when Eckler goes this way, there's less people there to tackle him. All right. At the snap, bam. As you see, linebacker, no one touches him. Linebacker should be faster than defensive end, right? Linebacker should be able to get to that running back. You see how this is all moving. The whole offensive line is pushing this direction. You got Darius Leonard getting ready to get tagged by number 69 here. There's nothing, not a lot he can do about that. Ture is keeping a really tight right along. I mean, he is bending. He's using his skills as a pass rusher of bending along an offensive lineman to be able to hone in on this run play. Beautiful. See, he got his arm out. The offensive lineman turned around, tried to block him. He just pushed his hands out of the way. Still rushing through. You got the wash here. He stops. He sees the Eckler cuts back inside, wraps him up, brings him down. Now, Ture is not the biggest defensive lineman, not, not in any means. So, he's kind of like Darius Leonard in the aspect of if he tackles a running back high, he's got, he, he tends a chance to getting bowled over a little bit, but Ture was able to set his feet, wrap and slow him down enough so he could get help from the other defensive linemen, the tackles, to bring him down. Let's let's check this out from a better angle. This is where you got Ture here. You see Leonard sliding over. Now you got heavy defense on this side. Houston. Let's see the snap, gents. You got Rivers. That's that's Colts quarterback now. Calls for the ball. Oh, nope. Butter not now. The guard just stood back up. <laughs> All right. Guards calling out Anthony Walker. There's the snap. Instantaneous. You got Adams coming this way. Ture coming... All your linebackers are moving with the line. This guard is worried about Walker, not worried about Ture. But he didn't realize Ture was so quick that he's already passed. See, he's like, oh, no, i got to slow him down because this is a beeline. Ture just gets around him. You watch his arms. He uses that arm to just swat that one-arm block off of him. Bam. 
when the running back stops, does his cutback, Ture is not over pursuing. He slows down, opens his arms to wrap up just enough to slow him down so that you have the entire Colts front seven in a pile on top. That's what speed does on a front seven. This is why you have so much speed on a front seven. You get one guy to get him, doesn't necessarily have to bring him down. Just to stop him. And then because you have so much speed on the front seven, they converge on the ball so quickly that there's almost no gain after that contact. Your job isn't necessarily to bring him down immediately. Your job is to stop and slow him so that you get help when you have that much speed in the front seven. This was an absolute great play by Kimoko Ture. All right, so now here is a play where Kamoko Ture shows how quick he is on a stunt. All right, and the fact, remember earlier I said this is that play on that thumbnail where the running back is just absolutely holding him. And if he hadn't held him, Rivers was dead to rights by Ture. And instead, Ture was able to step away, end up throwing a touchdown on this play, only because the referees did not actually see the hold by Eckler here. Now, we have Ture right here on the end. And he's going to come up through the middle here once these two guys and these two guys get contact, decide who they're going to block. There's going to be this massive hole here. And that hole is Austin Eckler's job to protect Rivers. Let's watch how this play turns out. There he goes. Eckler grab. Look, watch. Well, oh, he falls down. And there's the throw for the touchdown. Unreal. I can't believe that happened. That say, it should have been a sack rather than a touchdown. But let's watch how this plays out. So, this is a really, really good job by Ture of getting inside. But not just Ture. This blitz that's about to happen from this side takes the right, or sorry, left tackle's option. So he can't grab the defensive tackle. That's the guard's job. That's what this play is about. It's about freeing up Ture's speed. This is something that a lot of uh, teams use, and the Colts' defensive coordinator, Matt Eberflus, Throws these plays in just specifically for guys like Kimoko Ture because of his speed. This this play right here is specifically meant for Ture to get to the quarterback. Watch what happens. All right. So. There's the snap. There's the blitz. Right tackle has to come out to get him. He cannot slide in. Or take Autry and let the guard take Ture that's behind him. Eckler steps out in front, sees Ture coming around the edge. Ture's got a full head of steam at this point. I mean, you see how he bends around? Oh my goodness. The, his, bend, his bend coming this way is just as good as his bend coming around the other side. It's unreal. And the way that he used... His leg, see how he's leaning in on the turn? That's not only keeping his balance, but it's keeping his momentum, his speed. And because of that speed, when he has that impact with Eckler, Eckler is pushed out of the way. See, see how he's got his hands up? Eckler's wrapped him already. He's got him wrapped up because Eckler wasn't able to actually put his hands out front and push him away. Because he wasn't able to do that. Because of the, the speed and impact. That Kimoko Ture came in on Eckler. Eckler has no choice but to wrap. Ture uses that speed into power. Bulls right past him. Eckler just. This is a textbook tackle. This is a defensive textbook tackle. You hit high. 
you slide down, you wrap a leg. Look, at this point, Ture is being, look at that. He's got him by the leg. Ture's got him dead to rights had he not been held. Ture then still can't. He's being taken to the ground. Rivers has to pull the ball down and get away from Ture in order to step over and throw this football downfield for the touchdown. There is no way on God's green earth Philip Rivers would have had time to do that had that hold not happened. Yet somehow, it wasn't called. I can't believe it. It really sucks. It put seven points on the board for the Chargers, but that right there is something that shows you that Ture on stunts is a very, very dangerous person. And because of this, because of this, Ture, I am absolutely 100% sure, walked over to this judge right here and at the end of this play and said, hey, you should have watched Eckler because he held the crap out of me and kept me from getting to Rivers on that touchdown. That will come into play later. On this play, we have Kimoko Ture lined up well outside the left tackle, as you see well over here. This is known as the nine wide, all right? Now, what a nine wide is, is basically it's your, it's your speed rushers. It's where your speed defensive ends, your, your pass rush specialists come into hand. What sets this up is that the three tech lines up in front generally on this situation, in front of the tackle, so that when he comes in, that left guard has to, has to contact him, and he's set. Now, he could roll in or roll out or either way, but he's trying to keep that guard set there so that the nine wide can either go well outside and try to burn around the left tackle or set him up because of how many times he's went out that way. He could cut back inside either with a spin move or a one cut or something of that nature and still have a hole, a vacant spot here because the tackle has already moved out due to the speed of the defensive end. So, this is a very popular way of setting up defensive ends and their pass rush moves. Now, in this situation, Ture does his speed rush on the outside with his bend to get to the quarterback, get a sack, and a strip. Let's watch the play, see how it turns out, shall we? Bam! Got him. And that was done. That's what I'm talking about. That is why. That was absolutely gorgeous. Now let's let's watch this in slow mo. Watch how he uses his bend. All right. Watch how he uses his hands. Here we go. Now, at the snap, you notice how Autry comes up on the guard. And then he's going to move inside to bring the guard with him in case Ture decides he wants to cut inside, right? Ture immediately starts to go out. You see, he's going inside. Eckler is getting ready to take off this way. Because he sees that the end, this defensive end is held one-on-one. -on -one. He's got his hands on Ture. Ture's got his hands between the arms. You see how Ture's got his hand between the arms? That's important. It's like a pry bar, you know? When you got two things, you can set a pry bar, use, use leverage, and then when you bend it, you break off on, on that. It's, it's a really good move. Autry's still going inside. Eckler's too worried about over here due to there's only two pass rushers on this side. And three blockers. Ture, see what I'm talking about with the hole? He used that arm as, as a lever. Broke free. Great hand movement. This is something that you see. I don't know if you've watched Robert Mathis' uh, tweets in the offseason, last offseason, this offseason, where he's, he's just working with hand movements. Different, different ways of... of uh, 
just swatting your hands to try to get the uh, offensive lineman's hands away from the body so that there's no contact so your feet and body can continue to move. At this point, he's dead. I mean, he's dead to rights because if you look, Therese got his shoulder inside. Rivers already did a seven-step drop. Therese got his shoulder inside. He's, he's, he's got two yards on him. Even if Rivers steps up, Therese going to be able to get a hand on him because of this. He reaches over. Wham. Now, did you see where he wrapped? Watch. What, see this hand? This hand right there. Watch. See it? He goes for the football as he wraps up the quarterback. Not only is he wanting a sack, but these defensive ends... These linebackers, they are taught when you're hitting a quarterback and you've got a free shot, make sure one of your hands, when you wrap up, goes for that football. Bam, he does it, knocks that football out. That is a sack force fumble for Kamoko Ture. The first one of the year for him. And it starts him off really good. Game one, week one, 2019 season. Now, sometimes... An offensive lineman cannot handle a speed rusher. And when that happens and he's noticing that the speed rusher is always getting him by, you know, just his speed and bend, he'll end up grabbing the inside of the jersey, right? He starts doing that often. And technically, you can do that as long as you don't see stretch of the jersey, all right? You, most offensive linemen do it all the time. And you can, it can happen, but once that jersey is stretched, then the referee notices and usually calls a penalty for holding. Now, a defensive end can deal with this two ways. One, if he's being held like that, he can either A, do as I just did, said, go ahead, do something that stretches that jersey, whether that's, you know, try to do a spin move or step away to get that jersey to stretch out in hopes, in hopes that a referee will see it, call holding, you know, 10-yard penalty. Or if they're expecting it and know and are ready for it and have a counter move for it, they can use that counter move. Remember when I was talking about how he works with, uh, Robert Mathis all the time with the hand movements. Here he uses one of those counter moves knowing that he's about to be grabbed. Once he uses that counter move, he beats that tackle with no problem. Let's watch this video here full speed. Just see how the play turns out. We're going to watch it from the beginning to the end, both streams. Because on this angle, you notice, he gets around that. Bam! He completely knocked the football out of his hands. So that's another strip sack for Kimoko Ture. Two strip sacks in one game. Unreal. That's, that's impressive. Here's Ture again at the wide nine. Comes around. Uses. Did you see the counter move? Did you see that counter move? Because that was beautiful. All right. Again. You've got the nine wide. You got Autry sitting up, getting ready to take on, you know, this, like we saw in the last video. Let's see exactly what happens here, shall we? All right, so in slow mo. Now I'm using this angle so that you could actually see the counter move. You couldn't see the counter move quite as well on the other angle. This angle, you could see it much, much better. Comes around. There's the grab. All right. So he's got him. He's holding him. You see You see how he's kind of got, got him all the way around. It's just bear hug. Watch what Ture does here. This is rip. Oh, my Lord. Did you see the rip? That's unbelievable. That is some serious ripping power right here. He just takes his hands, puts them up. And brings them down at the right time. Right as he needs to bend around that tackle. As he's doing this, he rips those arms down and behind him. He expected the hold. 
and he ripped it hard. What? Boosh! Completely out of the way, and yet that rip, with all that force that he put in, hardly slowed him. He was still driving his legs. If you look, he's still driving these legs while ripping. So he's still got forward momentum and ripping out the arms behind him to keep his body moving. Once those arms are pulled out of the way, he's beside him. This tackle's done. He knows it. He was able to continue moving by driving his legs and ripping at the same time. Now he's got just a free free drive right towards Rivers. And bam. He just reaches around just like you've always seen Robert Mathis, Dwight Freeney. You see them all the time. I'm sure he was taught that multiple times over the last two seasons by Robert Mathis. That as he come around, you bring that right arm around the quarterback and swat at the ball. He does so, knocks that ball out, and then the Colts recover. Or no, I don't think the Colts recover it. Nope. Either way, that's a dead play. That is a sack strip for Kamoko Ture. Beautifully done. Great counter move to a hold that he was fully expecting. Now, Kamoko Ture is not always on the right end. Sometimes he plays on the left end over here, right? And I'll tell you what, he doesn't have the same bend as he does on the right. He's more natural on the right side, but on the left side, he's still effective. And because the talent level of the right tackle is generally not as good as the left tackle of an offensive line, that slight marginal difference doesn't really matter as much because you still have better talent level on the defensive end rather than the right tackle when they switch positions. Now, on this play, you're going to see pressure by Ture on Patrick Mahomes. Now, Ture might have got a sack here if it wasn't for an illegal block in the back, which, of course, was not called. Let's go ahead and watch this play in full, full motion. Gets in, beats him, pushes him out. He went to running after him and got pushed right in the freaking back. Right in the back. I mean, come on. Now, this is a situation which we have not seen yet. Kamoko Ture uses his speed to power move. He runs right at the tackle hits him full force, and pushes off. He has the agility and quickness to reset himself, adjust, and go straight after the quarterback a little bit quicker than the right tackle does. Here he comes, gets that full steam, comes in, full boom, explosion. You notice he pushed him inside. He took a wide route, came in at a specific angle to hit and push, which pushed him back just enough to where now he has a straight angle for Patrick Mahomes. Mahomes sees the pressure at the last second, gets away from him. Good move by Patrick Mahomes. I mean, he's one of the best, if not the best quarterback in the NFL for a reason. And this is one of the reasons escaping the pressure. But Ture is still on his feet and he is barreling in after him. What's the right tackle do? Look at that. You see that? Tell me how this is not... I mean, here's, here's a big question. He's looking right at the play. Looking right at it. Those were two hands on the back of Ture pushing. Both his hands was on his back, right on the numbers, and pushed him. How is that not holding? Some of you might say, well, it wouldn't matter anyhow because Mahomes is away from him. Ture is not as fast as Mahomes. I beg to differ, and I'm going to show you that in a second. 
So in this play, we watch the aggressiveness of Teray. Even though he's beat, he's not able to get to the quarterback. He is completely relentless. He's no give up in this guy. He ends up making a play 14 yards down the field, chasing Patrick Mahomes down. Now, yes, Mahomes gets 14 yards on this play. There was a holding call, which got this called back, but it still shows exactly what kind of aggressive nature his non-stop motor Ture has. Let's watch this play in full motion here. There's Ture's beat right off. He stops, he sees him, he comes back. Look at the chase. Oh! At first glance, it looks like... At first glance, it looked like Mahomes slid. But that's not the case. Ture caught him and tripped him. Watch closely. There goes the motion. Anthony Walker following the motion. Trey tries to come in with that whole, you know, remember what I was talking about earlier. Tried to use that speed to power, but right left tackles are really good against speed to power generally. But he sees Mahomes. Trey sees Mahomes getting ready to step up. Now look at this. You see how he's got his arms stretched out? This is, there's a reason for this. There's a reason why he's got his arms stretched all the way out. That way, the, he's got long arms, much like Bobby Okereke, much like Darius Leonard. If your arms are longer than the tackle's arms or the guy blocking you, that tackle cannot get a good hold on you to stop you from changing directions. All right, so this is a very good move by him so that he can continue to move, change directions, disengage from that tackle. Now, Mahomes steps up. Ture notices immediately was able to disengage. Now, he's chasing. Mahomes is, you see, he's sprinting. He's like, man, I'm getting as many yards as I can. Ture trying to catch up to him. Catch. Catch him. Just, oh my goodness, you know how tired he is. Here he dives. He dives and, oh, did you see it? Left arm sweep the back of his ankles. That dive, left arm, hit the back of that leg, knocks it out from underneath the ground. Bam, knocked him down. Great effort by Kamoko Ture. The play is not dead until the whistle blows. Just because you have a really good athletic scrambling quarterback like Patrick Mahomes, Running the opposite direction from you does not mean you give up on the play. You continue to chase and make the play yourself because if you don't, no one else might not be able to. So he knows this and he just continues doing what he does best and that is chasing down the quarterback. Great job by Kamoko Ture. I can't wait to see him next season. I hope that he comes back as strong, if not stronger, and is able to stay healthy because I'm predicting a 10-sack-plus season for Kamoko Ture this year because he's not going to have to worry about these double teams anymore. Uh, you didn't see a lot of them here because I didn't show them. I showed you what happens when he's one-on-one -on -one against blockers. When he's double-teamed, you know, it's, it's tough for a guy his size to deal with anything with a double team. But now he's got Forrest. I mean, he's got DeForest Buckner beside him. He ain't going to have to worry about those double teams no more. DeForest is definitely taking those up. He's going to get a lot of one-on-ones. Kamoko Ture is going to get a lot, a lot of plays in the backfield. Expect to watch that happen. So, I love breaking down. Kimoko Ture for you. This was incredibly fun. Don't forget, if you're watching on Sportscaster, give me a follow. If you're watching on YouTube, subscribe, follow, hit that notification bell, and check out my comment, uh, the description of the video. And until next time, I'm Lawrence Owen. This has been Film Breakdown Kimoko Ture. And until next time, I hope you have a good one. Just because a guy's a player is not a household name doesn't mean we can't make him a household name.